B, small volume nebulizer with mask. <clears throat> C, connect the tubing to the gas source, air or oxygen, whichever is appropriate. <clears throat> Excuse me. Aseptically places the medicine in the small volume nebulizer. Okay, aseptically, what does that mean? Very clean, right? We're going to try not to get organisms in here. All right, so you're, a lot of these things, this is just sand, this is just salt water here. Just using it as an example. So there's different kinds of medicines that you're going to use. You can use albuterol, it's a bronchodilator. This is Zopinex, this is also a bronchodilator. And then there's others, there's steroids. Other things. But anyways, they're usually <clears throat> in unit doses. So you're going to twist the top off usually. All right. Do you think that, well, anyways, what we want to do when we, when we put this medication in is we don't want to be touching the inside of this nebulous. Just don't. Just put your hand up against it like that so you brace yourself and then just squirt the medicine right in there. If you start touching it inside, you know, you may have touched your glove to something already. And then you touch your glove and then go in there, you might introduce bacteria. Not 100% certain, but you might. So an aseptic technique is just simply, just don't touch it to the side of this. We good? All right, so try and do that. And we're going to put this back on. Oops. And then, uh, you got a three second roll when you drop stuff on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you never saw that. Nothing to see over here, okay? All right. Anyways. You don't, you, you definitely would want to uh, get a new mask or clean up. There's no telling how much bacteria is on the floor in the hospital. Everybody walking in and out, in and out, from this patient through that patient room. I certainly wouldn't want to apply the three second rule to that. Okay, uh, so aseptically places the medica medication in, sets the gas flow to six to eight liters. Okay, you guys know how to do that, right? Mm -hmm. And we have ourselves a nice aerosol. All right. So then we're going to place the mask on the patient's face and instruct the patient to breathe normally. <coughs> Periodically holding their breath for four to 10 seconds. Okay, I'm going to change that to just say 10 seconds. Does yours say four to 10? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll just change that and we'll just put it to 10. Okay. If possible, these patients, some of these patients can't hold their breath at all. They just can't. So once in a while, I say, you know, breathe in, hold your breath, just to help get some of that medicine set. Okay, you verbalize the next step, verse 11, assesses the vital signs, your breath sounds during the treatment. You have to keep your eye on the, on the vital signs, uh, not only before, but during. Because some people will have a very bad reaction to these bronchodilators, their heart rate will get going. Um, anyway, so you'll be monitoring that during the treatment. Okay, you're gonna verbalize how the treatment is finished. Well, before I do that, let me just show you something here. If you, if you turn this thing down too low, okay, you're not gonna nebulize much medicine. And any medicine that you do nebulize is gonna be large, and it's gonna really just sit in the upper air. If you nebulize this too much, if you nebulize this like, we need to get out of here soon, Kind of thing. <laughs> what you gotta do is you gotta that that medicine will nebulize very very quickly. If I remember, <laughs> all right. You get it to stay on. I'm exaggerating to make a point. I'm right there. Okay. So this medicine is gonna now we we've, we've really uh, increased the flow. We're, I have it doubled to what it should be. And so the particle size is going to get really small. Remember that? The particle size is going to get really small. And so, right, they're going to breathe it in, they're going to breathe it out. So not much of it is going to stay in their lungs. So like I said, it fits your schedule nice, but it doesn't do much for the patient. I think that's funny. You see all this? <laughs> all right. So let's see what else we have to do here. So verbalize how the treatment is finished. Now when the treatment is finished, let me just show you what it looks like. It'll have nothing in there. It'll have nothing in there, right? Okay. Let's see if we can get this thing to finish up here. Just a little 
little bit of medicine in there. But when it finishes, it's going to begin to sputter. You'll hear like a yeah. tss, tss, tss. You know, it'll just, it's like popcorn. You ever make popcorn? <coughs> and it stops popping, it's done. Otherwise, all right, kind of like that. It'll just start to sputter, and then it'll slow down, and you'll hear a few or it'll just be dry, and then, then it's finished. Yeah. Okay, we're not gonna, I don't know. I think it's going to. Yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there, but. I have attention deficit, so I'm gonna move on. Okay, so verbalize uh, how they know the treatment is finished. It's sputtering or it stops nebulizing. So we're gonna turn off the gas flow. Okay, we're gonna turn off the gas flow, remove the small volume nebulizer mastication, and place the patient back on the prescribed oxygen. Did you see that part? That's an important part. So if the patient was on oxygen, we're gonna put them back on oxygen. I would assume that they're gonna be on oxygen. Okay, empty the small volume nebulizer of the residual medication. Just take this off here, okay? I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna shake out this medicine. Now your textbook is, your textbook is very clear. You're supposed to rinse this out with sterile water, and then you put this thing to air dry. And the way that the hospitals really put uh, this to air dry is they do this usually. You see these bags here? They have these patient setup bags. They usually just hang this upside down like that. And it usually hangs on a flow meter like that. Have you guys seen that in the hospital yeah. setting? That's the way that they hang it for air drying. Now, you know, every uh, everywhere I've read about, uh, you know, keeping these things clean, they, they all say the same thing. You know, rinse it out, rinse it out with sterile water. Uh, you know, I've been in the field a long, long time. I have never, ever seen a hospital with a policy that says rinse it out with sterile water nor have I ever seen the therapist rinse out with sterile water. I'm just being honest with you. It's in your textbooks. That's the technique that's recommended, but does anybody do it? I have never seen anybody in South Florida, and I've been in a lot of hospitals here, because we go all over the town, uh, and I've never seen anybody do it. But you're gonna say it, right? You're gonna say it. It's, it's gonna get imprinted in your brain somewhere, because if it happens to show up on a board exam, Great, you know, you got it. I doubt that it will, but if it did. You don't ever rinse that out with tap water. You never rinse out anything that nebulizes medications and patients with tap water. You don't do that. Because tap water still has pathogens in it. We good with that? Yeah. Right. The practice is, the common practice is you get rid of the residual medication, you shake it out, reassemble, hang it upside down to air dry in a bag. And the hospitals, uh, some of these hospitals will change these every day. Some of them will change them every second or third day, but that's their infection control policy. They're the ones who have to read the CDC guidelines and their infection control committees have to say, this is how we're doing it. So they take full responsibility. Your job is just to adhere to whatever they tell you to do. Okay. All right. It's gonna, you're gonna see it might differ in various hospitals. 